Hello, my precious friends. I really hope that you are doing great. Welcome to our today's class. It's our fourth lesson on Advent Form 3, Mathematics topic called Commercial Arithmetics 2. So we are looking at our 10th example, which reads that Karyuki deposited 20,000 shillings in a fixed deposit account for a period of 18 months. The bank pays compound interest on quarterly basis. At the end of this period, Karyuki's account had 46,200 shillings. Determine the rate at which interest was uh, paid. So, of course, I'm going to let the unknown, which is the rate, to be R. So, I'll say let the rate, let the rate that was being charged to be R percent, R percent per annum. Then you are told that the interest was being charged on quarterly basis. Therefore, this one is being compounded. It is being compounded. Uh, quarterly it is being compounded uh quarterly remember um compounding quarterly simply means that after a period of a quarter of a year after a quarter of one year they simply calculate that particular rate then we know that one year is a period uh, equivalent to 12 months therefore if we calculate a quarter of a year which is simply a quarter of 12 months uh, this one is going to give us uh, by 4, 1, 4 into 12. Of course, this will be 3. So this will be 3 uh, months. Therefore, basically, this one simply means that one quarter of a year, uh, one quarter of a year, one quarter of a year is a period equivalent to uh, 3 months. Therefore, 3 months represents one quarter of a year. So we're going to ask ourselves, if um, one quarter of a year is three months, what about a period of uh, 18 months? Remember, I'm working with the one quarter of a year being three months because uh, I want to get the rate as a percentage per annum. Therefore, if one quarter, if one, if one quarter of a year uh, is a period of three months, what about in 18 months? In short, we want to see how many quarters will exist in 18 months. So if one quarter is three months, what about 18 months? So in a period of 18 months, we are going to have 18 divided by 3 months. Then, of course, multiplied by one quarter of a year. Therefore, in 18 months, we are going to get 3 here, 1, 3 into 18. Of course, this will be 6. So this one will be a period equivalent to 6 quarters. So we are having 6 quarters in a period of 18 months. So in simple terms, we can simply say that if uh, one year, if one year, which is a period of 12 months, a period of 12 months is going to have uh, four quarters. If this one will, is going to have uh, four quarters. Remember when we talk of four quarters, uh, we are simply talking of one year is 12 months. So 12 divided by three, of course, you're going to get four. Because remember, one quarter is three months. Uh, therefore, in 12 months, if you take 12 over three, you're going to get four quarters. Therefore, 12 months, which is one year, is going to give us four quarters. What about our period that we are given of 18 months? So what about 18 uh, months? So this will be 18 months, of course, divided by uh, 12 months, divided by 12 months, then multiplied by four quarters so that we get uh, the number of quarters that are going to exist in the period that we are given of 18 uh, months. So, of course, um, 4 here, 1. Then, of course, 4 into 12, this will be 3. 3 here, 1. 3 into 18. Of course, this will be 6. Therefore, it means that our period N, uh, the period uh, which is basically N, will actually uh, give us 6 quarters. So, we are having uh, 6 quarters. Therefore, this is what we are going to use as our period N. Now, having found that, we are going to substitute in the formula for the compound uh, interest because we are given the accumulated amount. We are also given the uh, initial principal. So we know that accumulated amount in compound interest is always given by the principal into 1, then plus the rate of uh, 100, then of course to the power of n. Remember, the interest of the question is for us to get the uh, rate. So the accumulated amount after that particular period of 18 months was uh, 46,200 uh, shillings, 46,200. 
So this should be equivalent to the initial principal was uh, 20,000 shillings. So 20,000. Then of course into one, then plus the rate. We had let our rate to be R percent per annum. Therefore, this will be R. Uh, a percentage is always divided by 100. Then of course to the power of N. So our N will be equivalent to a period of uh, six quarters. Since we've seen that uh, six quarters are actually going to exist in a period of uh, 18 months. Then of course after that uh, we are going to compute uh, this one. The easiest way of dealing with this you're going to divide through by uh, 20,000 to make our work easier. So divided by 20,000 we also divide uh, this side by 20,000 so that uh, this one and this can cancel out. So if you feed this part on the calculator that is if you take 46,200 divided by uh, 20,000 of course the two zeros will cancel out. So if you take 462 divided by 200 so we have 462 uh, then we are we are dividing by 200 of course this one is supposed to give us a uh, one then of course plus rates of a uh, hundred then of course to the uh, power of uh, six. So 462 divided by 200, you feed that with the calculator, you're going to get um, 2.31, of course, which is equal to uh, 1 plus the rate of uh, 100, then of course to the power of 6, that is the 6 quarters. So to get the value of R, you're going to uh, take the 6th root on both sides of the equation. So I'll take 6th root on this side. I also take the uh, sixth root on the other side. So sixth root, uh, we write it uh, this way. So if you want to press uh, sixth root on your calculator, you'll press digit six, then followed by shift, uh, then followed by this particular simple, then um, of course followed by uh, 2.31. So you feed this on the calculator, you're going to get uh, the sixth root of 2.31 being equal to 1.150, of course, which should be equal to. So the sixth root is going to uh, cancel out with uh, the power of six. So on the right hand side, we're going to remain with one plus R over 100. Remember, our aim is to get the value of um, R. So to achieve that, I'll take a one to this other side so that I'm having 1.150 then minus one being equal to R over 100. So 1.150 minus one of course this will give you a uh, zero point uh, one five uh, zero uh, zero point one five one five zero uh, being equal to R over 100. So to get the value of R, I'm going to multiply through by 100. So of course, multiply by 100. I also multiply this other side by 100. Of course, these two are going to cancel out. So it means that our rate into as a percentage it is going to give us, you take 0 0.150 times 100, the two zeros are going to shift the two decimal uh, points. So of course, this one will give us 15%. So the rate was 15% per annum. So that was the rate of interest that was charged. Then we look at our example number 11, which reads that John deposited 10,000 shillings in a fixed deposit account. The bank pays compound interest at a rate of 12% per annum compounded semi-annually. Remember semi means half. Find the time taken at the nearest years for John's account to accumulate to uh, 17,000 908 shillings. So the first thing that we um, are going to do, of course, is to find the rate that we're going to work with. We are told that the rate is 12%. Uh, so this is 12% per annum, 12% per annum. But this one is being compounded. It is being compounded semi-annually. It is being compounded semi-annually, uh, semi annually. So remember the word semi means half. So semi annually simply means a period of half a year. Now if we get the semi, the semi of a year it will just be half of a year, a half of uh, one year of course which is 
a half of one year of course is 12 months so when we are talking of semi this will be by two one uh by two this will be six so this is a period of uh six months so six months is equivalent to one semi of a year so one semi one semi of a year is a period equivalent to uh, six months so six months is actually half of a year or semi uh, of a year now remember in this particular case uh we are not given the time that was being taken uh, for this particular interest to be uh charged so i'm going to let the time so we will let let the time taken because you're asked to find the time taken to the nearest years for john's account to accumulate to this amount so we let the time taken uh time taken we let the time taken to be equivalent to uh t years so i let the time taken to be t years i let the time taken to be t years now if you are saying that um a semi uh we are saying that one semi of a year is a period equivalent to uh six months so it simply means that in one year in one year one year is actually equivalent to two semis one year will give us two uh semis uh yeah one year will give us two semis remember uh six months times two it will give you one year therefore in one year we are having uh two six months or we are having two semis so what about our period of uh t years so what about in our period of t years so of course we'll have t years divided by uh one year then of course multiplied by a uh, two semis multiplied by two uh semis so it means that our um, period n our period n will actually be equivalent to so of course the years will cancel out so our period n will be equivalent to t multiplied by 2 so this will be 2t so these are the number of semi years or these are the number of six months that will exist in a period of uh t years now we are we now how we now have our n or the time that was taken of course we also need to uh, get the rate now remember the rate in this case we are told that 12 percent so the 12 percent is per annum so per annum simply means that this the rate is applying for uh one year so we'll ask ourselves if 12 percent is in one year uh what about remember whenever we multiply the period uh, by two we always divide uh the rate by two so it means that if um, we were multiplying our period by two, remember our period was uh, t. So to get the total period n, we we multiply two multiplied by t. Therefore, to get the rate, the rate we simply do the opposite. If we were to multiply the period by two, it means the rate was to be uh, divided by two. So we multiply by, uh, we get a half of twelve percent uh, per annum. So it means that the rate that you are going to work with. It will be uh six percent so six percent uh per annum so this is the rate that we are supposed to uh work with remember whenever you multiply the period by two the rate should always be halved or uh, similarly you can simply say that if 12 percent if 12 percent per annum is equivalent to one year is equivalent to one year what about a half of a year what about a half of a year Remember, half is coming in because of the word semi. Semi means half of the year. So if 12% per annum, if 12% is in one year, remember per annum means one year, what about half of the year? So of course, that will be half of the year. It will be half of the year divided by one year, then multiplied by the rate of 12%. So this one is going to give you, of course, a half of 12, it will still give you 6% per annum. So the rate we are going to work with, uh, six percent per annum once we have all the values that we need the rest is to substitute in the formula for the accumulated amount whenever you're dealing with the um, compound interest so we know that accumulated amount is always given by the principal into one plus rate of a hundred then of course to the power of n so the accumulated amount uh of course will be seventeen thousand nine hundred and eight so we are going to have Seventeen thousand nine hundred and eight being equal to 
the initial principal was uh, 10,000 shillings. So it's equals to 10,000 uh, shillings into one. Then of course, plus uh, the rate. Our rate, we got it at 6% per annum. So this is our rate. So we'll have six. Then of course, over uh, 100 since it is a percentage. Then our period N, uh, of course, it was 2T. So the period was uh, 2 multiplied by uh, T. Now, to simplify this, we are going to, first of all, remove the 10,000 from this side by dividing through by 10,000. Also divide through by uh, 10,000. So, of course, uh, the 10,000 will cancel out. So, of course, the um, uh, five zeros will shift our decimals. They're actually four zeros. One, two, three, four. So, we're going to have 1.7908. Eight, 1.7908 uh, being equal to a uh, one then of course plus a uh, six over 100 of course this will give me 0 0.06 uh, then to the power of a uh, two t so this will be 1.7908 being equal to uh into bracket one plus 0 0.06 of course this will give us 1.06 then to the power of a uh, two t so the easiest way of getting a T, we are going to introduce logs on both sides. So I'll introduce here log to base 10. Also introduce here log at base 10. Then remember from the loss of indices, we know that if you are having um, if you are having the log of A, uh, B to the power of N is the same as saying N, uh, the logarithm of what? A, B. Therefore, I'm simply going to use that particular rule to pre-multiply these uh, here. So applying that law of um, indices, that is uh, the law of logarithm, you're going to have the log of uh, 1.7908 being equal to uh, 2t, then of course the log of uh, 1.06. So I've just taken this one uh, to pre-multiply my log. So of course to remain with the uh, 2t, I'm going to divide through uh, by the log of 1.06 also divide this side by the log of uh, 1.06 so these two will cancel out then of course to solve for the value of t of course this part will be fed into the calculator so if you take um, the log of 1.7908 divided by the log of 1.06 the calculator is going to give you uh, you're going to get an answer of uh, 10 so you'll have 10 being equal to 2t then of course we divide through by 2 divide through by 2 so it means that our value of t will be equal to 10 divided by 2 so our period t will be equal to uh, 5 of course the t was to be to the nearest year so the period was actually uh, 5 years thank you very much for accompanying me until the end of this particular lesson i do not take it for granted in case you are new to the channel kindly hit the subscription button and also turn on the notification bell so that whenever i upload a new video you'll get notified until next time this is kind tuition academy thank you very much